Alright, and welcome back to part 8 of modding the original Xbox. In the last video, I mentioned that I'd be covering how to repair a DVD drive, but while filming this, I realized that the gear that I'm holding here is actually shot. The uh, plastic's all busted on it, so this DVD drive will probably never work again. But uh, we'll shelve this for now, and we'll use this at a later time for a different project that I'll show you. But uh, for today's video, I decided I wanted to talk to you guys about replacing capacitors. And as you can see here, we have one capacitor that has started to bulge and to leak. But having a capacitor that is bulged can cause random shutdowns and who knows what other unexpected issues. So it's best to just replace it. So what we're going to do is remove this motherboard and go underneath the inspection camera and pull the capacitor out. Two caps next to the bad capacitor were actually replaced a few years ago, but I never replaced the center cap because it was healthy at the time. You can see eventually a few years later that the capacitor also bulged and, and erupted. It's best just to replace all the caps. Sometimes there's three, four, or even five caps in this area. The reason why there were so many failures with the capacitors on the original Xbox is because the original Xbox was produced between the capacitor plague era uh, between 1999 and 2007. There was faulty electric light composition that caused corrosion accompanied by gas generation, often rupturing the case of the capacitors from a buildup of pressure. High failure rates occurred in many well-known brands of electronics and were particularly evident in motherboards, video cards, and power supplies of personal computers. So with all that being said, we should use some solder wick on the back of this Xbox motherboard and we can try to remove as much of the solder as we possibly can from within these holes. And then uh, while it was kind of difficult to film, I would uh, heat up both the joints to uh, rock the capacitor out of its spot. And then I would do basically the same thing the other way where I would uh, put the capacitor back into the hole. Here I have the legs of the capacitor coming through and as you can kind of see that the legs are kind of crooked inside there and on the back of the board the the legs are kind of bent so what I've been using here is a needle nose to try to pull these legs through while the solder is melted so that it should straighten the legs out on the other side and flush the capacitor to the board. Now we're just going to add a little bit of flux and apply some solder here. Once the capacitor is flush with the board and you have soldered the pads, go ahead and trim the legs. So this right here is a 1.6 motherboard and as you can see this capacitor has quite a bit of a bulge coming up from the top of it and uh, it needs to be replaced. So I have my left hand underneath the motherboard and I am rocking the capacitor back and forth and heating up both points until it falls right out. And the capacitor that we have here, you can see the bulge on the top of it is a Nishikon 6.3 volt 3300 UF. I'll be replacing it with a 10 volt Rubicon 3300 UF capacitor. Now you can see in the screenshot there's a white area on the right side. This white area represents the negative lead on the capacitor. You have to make sure that you put the negative lead into this hole Otherwise, you will damage the capacitor. Now with my left hand on the top of the capacitor, I am heating up each side to push the capacitor through the hole. And if you need a little help to straighten out the wires, you can use a needle nose to grab the wire that has come through. And this will force the wire to straighten up on the other side. 
You want to keep pushing until the capacitor is flush with the board. Then you can trim the wires on the back after you've soldered the traces down. That's really all there is to it. You can clean up the area with rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush like I'm doing here. Just be aware that if you replaced a capacitor and there were similar model capacitors that were still healthy, that these capacitors also may be going bad in the future. I'd replace two capacitors on one motherboard and a year later the third one that was healthy failed on me. So if one of the capacitors just under the CPU has failed, you might want to consider replacing every capacitor of the same model whether or not it has failed because at some point it's more than likely going to fail. The one thing quick I forgot to mention is that when you're choosing a replacement capacitor you should choose a capacitor that is of the same type which this is an aluminum capacitor the same microfarad which is the number listed next to UF. This capacitor is listed as 3300 UF, so you should pick 3300 UF for your replacement. And this replacement capacitor says 10 volts. You could choose any capacitor that's the same or higher. The voltage rating is what the capacitor can actually handle. So by raising this value, we are getting a stronger capacitor, although it's not necessary to do this. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.